Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and I really need to figure out something to contact that camera wobbling. Um, yeah, I need to find something that's not the desk to mount my camera to anyway. Here we have a graphics card that's not really that special, um, but it's kind of special what I and some other people are gonna do with these. So this is a GTX 260. Um, 216 cores edition, and basically what we the um, what we like me and some other people from the Discord that I'm on are planning is to have a little like friendly uh, overclocking competition, kind of like you've been seeing between like J2 Sense and Gamers Nexus, where they like all get the same kind of hardware and then just like gradually ramp up the stakes and uh, get more and more ridiculous with uh, their overclocking efforts. Um, and we kind of thought we we're gonna do the same thing. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be like an open thing for other people to join yet. For now, it's like it's gonna be between like a couple members of our Discord. We might open it up to other people. It's still like kind of in the planning phase because not everyone has their cards yet. I literally just got this, turned it on once to make sure it works, and that's pretty much it. And I just want to take a, a look at it um, because like I want to see what memory chips this has. I want to see if it's a B3 core, like this is the uh, red 4-phase PCB that according to Tag, who is also an extreme overclocker, is the best one actually, because apparently this one's guaranteed to, like I know this is a 55 nanometer core, because GTX 2, like uh, 200 series cards, so also this GTX 260 here, you can get in 65 and 55 nanometers. And uh, according to him, if you get a card with this PCB, you're guaranteed to get a 55 nanometer core and apparently also the B3 uh, revision, which is supposed to be the best one. So, yeah, um, just kind of going to uh, take the card apart and see what's in it. <laughs> As you can see, this one was never taken apart. It still has the warranty voided removed sticker. Well, let's let's avoid that. I don't know how old, like 13 year old warranty. It was actually going, doing surprisingly well for never been opened or cleaned. Because, yeah, the one test run I did, it, it maxed out like 55 degrees. It's like pretty good if you ask me for thermal paste. That, I mean, this is a card, like not just with super old thermal paste, this one also has an IHS, because like it's a. Uh, a Tesla card, like Tesla and Fermi and I'm not entirely sure if the 8000 series is a different architecture, also Tesla, but like the 8800 GTX also had an IHS, I think. Um, so yeah, there's not just thermal paste on the IHS, there's also a thermal paste under the IHS. And I really hope the thermal pads on this one are still okay, because I don't really have any replacements. The ones I ordered for the 980Ti I used up completely. But uh, yeah, let's see. There's a lot of screws on this one. This one's almost as bad as a reference card. Okay, is that it? Do we have... Nope, we have more screws in the I.O. shield. Oh, actually, this one might be... This one might have an interesting design where you can, like, take the shroud off without having to remove the actual fin stack. Yeah, it does. Oh, so this one... Blah. This one might have been cleaned, though it isn't very clean, as you can see. Yeah, the shower was probably taken apart, because, like, this fan cable was, like, around this thing and not behind it, as it was probably supposed to be. So that's the shroud off, and we do get a nice VRM heatsink. Uh, wait, is that taped on? I know that some that like Zotac thermo taped their VRM heat sinks on. Nope, that's a thermo pad. <sighs> Damn, is that dusty? Thermo pad looks okay though. 
And this one. Oh, so it's separate. Oh, that's cool. Though that might not fit my face change. Or my water block. But that's cool. That's a really nice base plate design that you like have a separate one for the core. And then like a base plate. That's actually really cool. This one doesn't want to come off though. Come on. It's like as if it's taped onto something. <laughs> Oh, the thermal pads really don't want to. Oh, that's the, that, there's one thermal pad that doesn't want to get, that can't decide which side it's gonna stick to. That's well, mostly okay though. It's Samsung, yay! Um, which one though? Because I know there's the one chip from Samsung that's bad and like H die is the good one and then there's a different one that's bad. This one is H die, yay! So, um, this being Samsung H die is the same memory chip that Tag had on his good card, and it's a B3 core. Okay, so this one's basically the God Roll GTX 260. This is the basically the combi uh, combination you want, I think. So it's the good core, like the good revision of the core. And it's Samsung HDI memory, which, I mean, I haven't verified myself, but Tech said that his card scaled and his card had HDI. So, yeah. So I have basically the exact same card combination that he had. Um, so yeah, uh, but that's, yeah, that's cool, I guess. It is really dusty, though, in some places. So, now I just want to figure out... So that's core VRM. And then that is probably memory. But what powers this? Down here? But there's no inductor for that. Is that one just powered with like an LDO? Hmm. So we have a four phase core, a one phase memory, and then like this chip, as far as I know, is like the display drive circuitry. Like basically what's like these, the, after 200 series, it got integrated into the core as the PEX rail, I think. Like this is basically where like, the PEX rail on a modern card powers the part of the core that's the equivalent of this, basically. Uh, so yeah. I don't really know what powers it. I'm. I don't know if you need to volt mod anything for this one. It might be code bug related, but we won't get there for a while. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to clean my stuff after. So, what controller do we have here? This one doesn't have software voltage control, which is which is slightly annoying, but not really. This is an RT8841. So, which tag something? Probably can. Well, tag quite literally made a volt mod guide for this card, so. Yeah. Memory controller is this one, because I still remember that. That's an RT9259A. And then. Yeah. I don't know what those are. Are those like. Because, like, what's... Actually, what is that? Is that, like, because those can't be drivers, right? Because, like, you only have two of them. Or does each of those, like, drive two phases? Like, like what is that? It's an RT9619A. Like, that kind of sounds like a VRM component. But why only two? If we have four phases. Or is this one actually... No, that doesn't make sense. I don't think this is a FAT2 phase, because like this, like this card is from before manufacturers did this. 
Because, like, they would have easily also made this look like a Two-Face with, like, the four MOSFETs. So... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe those are, like, drive. Maybe they're, like, doublers or something? But, like, that controller looks a bit too big to be just a Two-Face controller. So... I actually don't know what, what these chips do. So, yeah. The back side of the core looks very like a lot like like back side of the PCB just just screams please put more multilayer ceramics on me or like just eh would I do that? Well, if I use the face change, I'm gonna have to use the outer holes because the inner ones are probably too small. So I can't use the bracket anyway. I might just put some can type caps behind that once we get to the modding stage of the uh, competition. Because we're gonna actually do gonna do actual modding, not just like I mean, okay, you can't shunt mod these. These are too old. Like we specifically chose these cards because they're like both kind of high end. Like yeah, they're not two eighties, they are two sixties, but they use the exact same core. Like they use the G two hundred. Um, so it's still the same like physical thing as the high-end variant but these cards you can get like really really cheap um, and they also don't draw that much power but still enough so that like it's not an NVS 300 basically because we wanted to have a competition that's very easy to join because like we have um, well, first of all on, on, on everyone that's in our group myself included have like the money to just like buy let's say a 1080 or something for a competition. Um, so we want to get something cheap. But we still want to have it be like worthy to mod. Like we want to have a thing that's sort of high-end that has a PCB big enough to like do anything to it. Because like the NVS 300 for cheap ass chips, you couldn't really do that much to it. Like it, it's a very small card with not much modding potential. Um, so we chose the 260 because the 260 is actually very similar in price to the NVS 300. They're like, I think I paid 15 euros for this one. So, yeah, like 15 euros for a card like that. That's that's a pretty good entry price because like these are also old enough. You can plug these into like literally any computer, and you will probably not be bottlenecked by your CPU. Because like they don't they don't even support DirectX 11, because like um, the benchmark we chose to run is Unigine Tropics, which I think doesn't exist on HW board. Um, like it's basically an older version of Heaven. Um, so, yeah. I'm just gonna clean the base plate. I'm gonna have to renew that part. And it's that a lot of dust in there. Okay, when I get this one thermal pad off that memory chip, that's that's triggering my OCD a bit. Come, come off. Those thermal pads look like really good state for being, I don't know, how old, very old. Like I know GTX 580s released over 10 years ago, and then there was the 400 series, and then there was this. So. This one's gotta be like around 13 to 15 years old, if I can guess. So this heatsink looks like, I mean, these don't pull that much power. These pull like, I think I looked it up. Like I did look it up. I don't know if I remember it correctly, but I think these pull less than a GTX 680 in terms of power. And they have a massive die, at least with the IHS. So thermal transfer is gonna be quite good with a contact area this big. And the 680 with like a much, much smaller die already ran pretty cool. So this heatsink is probably adequate. Like, I mean, 55 degrees with like the stock, like this thermal paste. <laughs> Not bad. Um, also, I'm gonna have to... <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean my place after this. So much dust. I hope it doesn't sound too bad on the microphone. Oh man. 
I think I'm just gonna like clean the heat sink under water. It's completely free. Like I could I could just wash the entire thing, except the base plate with the thermal pads. That well the base plate well this this side of the base plate looks pretty bad, but the other side is fine. Yeah, whoever sold this to me definitely didn't clean it beforehand. So the VRM heatsink thermal pad looks pretty bad. Though the heatsink itself looks pretty nice. Like, this isn't exactly a very good looking VRM. Like, these giant MOSFETs don't really inspire confidence. But it didn't really, like, I I, I touched the backside of, of the card. Like, you can, you can see this giant switch node layer right here. Like, this is pretty much as close to the VRM. Like, if the VRM runs hot, this area of the PCB is gonna be hot too. And after a full run of uh, Unigine Tropics, which has like 10 scenes, so it's not quite as long as Heaven with, I think, like 18. But it's still longer than like Fire Strike, and it was like only slightly warm. And then again, these don't draw that much power. So. And again, like just because these MOSFETs have like a. the older style package compared to what you usually get for discrete MOSFETs these days doesn't mean that they have to be bad. Uh, one of these ST micro some things. I can't really read the... Uh, yeah, so the... These are actually kind of hard to read. I can't really say anything. ST... GK17D845, that's the lowest column. And then 2L is the middle one, and the top one is... Uh, D90ND. I have no idea what that is. And then the high side MOSFETs, like, look... They don't have the ST Micro branding on them, so these are something different. Not ST Micro, which I can lead, read even less. Well, I guess I'm gonna go with the VRM is fine until it blows up, and then I'm putting the direct CO2 e power on it. <laughs> That's pretty much the thing I'm gonna go by. Um, yeah. But I like what I'm seeing. I got the good memory chips, I got the good core, at least I've been told that this is what you want. I haven't actually tested. Like, I've only ever run one GTX 280 kind of seriously, because like I modded it a little bit, put vault mods on it, and I tried running it with dry eyes, which went fully south. Like, I, I did one dry eyes session. I don't think I ever uploaded a video of it, because it just went... It was awful. That's the moment I decided to buy a face change instead, but I did never ran the 280 on my face change. Um, this one's gonna be run on my face change at some point, but that means that uh, I don't really have any first-hand experience with seriously overclocking these as of recently, especially because the 280 I ran had like CFR and not HDI, so a completely different memory chip. Uh, I have a second 280 that actually has HDI, um, but that one's not modded and the core kind of sucks on it, so... Also, it's a 65 nanometer uh, core, another 55. Uh, Performance-wise, I think these should be identical, it's just that the 65 is probably a little bit less efficient, and that it might overclock, like the 55 nanometer might overclock a bit better. Like I've been told that this is the best one, like the 103B3. Um, the uh, the 65 nanometer one is, I think, a 105, not a 103. I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly, but this is a 55 one. It shows up in GPUZ. GPU-Z does read the version wrong, though it shows it as a B1, which I think is just the default one that 260s came with, and then later they introduced the B3, and GPU-Z just doesn't know how to detect that. Um, but yeah. So, interesting PCB, interesting looking card. It, I mean, it's red, that's cool. I like PCBs that are not just, like, boring. This one definitely isn't boring. Um... And I kind of like like the heats. Like I don't think I can keep this. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to keep this on face change. I might be able to. Uh, well, actually, if my water block fits these smaller holes here, then I can maybe keep it. 
if this doesn't collide with the uh, mounting plate of the water block. But on phase change, I'm pretty sure we'll have to use the outer holes, and these holes in the base plate are, are just not big enough. Uh, and I don't have a drill to widen these holes. So I'm probably gonna have to uh, just thermal tape a heatsink onto this thing, and then the rest is gonna be fine. Like if the core gets super cold from the phase change, then the rest of the like PCB is made out of copper, so the cold's gonna travel to the rest of the PCB too. And this one has its separate heatsink, so it's gonna be fine. Um, so yeah, but I like what I'm seeing. I uh, yeah, I didn't expect this one to be uh, such a nice card actually. Uh, like, I mean, it's a Game Ward card. Like, Game Ward and Palette, like, they basically make the same cards. Um, their cards are usually not that special. There's, there's like, the odd one here or there that's, like, pretty good. Um, but usually they just kind of make kind of cheap reference-like cards. Um, with also not that great coolers. But this one? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I like it. And I think the video is long enough now. Yeah, already over 20 minutes. Um, so, yeah, I guess thank you for watching. Uh, gonna take a look. Yeah, thank you for for taking a look at the card with me. Um, about the GTX 260 competition we're gonna have, like, it's still in the planning phase. Like, um, yeah. So far, only two of us have a card, with me being the second one. Um... There's, I actually bought a second 260 that isn't here yet. It's get, Well, it was supposed to be here two days ago, but the cell I bought it from decided to ship it with Hermes, and Hermes was, like, ringing my bell, my doorbell once. I opened the door downstairs, and the guy apparently didn't figure out how my door worked and just gave up. And then, apparently, there was two more attempts to deliver it that never made it to even ringing my doorbell. But the Hermes website says that they tried and I wasn't here, which is BS, because I was here. It's, it's the weekend, where would I go? Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be until I... Like, if they like they said they're going to try again today. If I don't get the card today, I'm just going to tell them to, okay, just, like, they deliver it to, like, a shop thing and went for me to pick up. Um, yeah. So, um, that second card... It's it's also a custom PCB one. It's from Gigabyte. It's interesting. Probably gonna take a look at it, but I might not keep the card because uh, a different person who wants to be part of the competition can't find a 260 locally, and that card was kinda meant for him. Uh, I don't know if he actually wants it, but if he does want it, he's he gets the card. If he doesn't want it, I keep it, and I will bench whichever one of the two is better, and then the other one I'll probably sell or something because I don't have that much space for GPUs that are effectively useless. I only need one 260 for this comp. Unless I break one, of course, but uh, I don't think I will. Anyway, uh, yeah, that tangent cost us three more minutes, so... Yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed my ramblings about this very old obsolete graphics card, but, uh, I mean... If tech can get people uh, excited about it, I, I guess I can too. At least I'm excited about it. Um, so yeah, uh, might might see some more things about this. Uh, especially once the competition starts and there's gonna be like somewhat regular things happening with the card. When we get regularly like more crazy for our efforts. Um, so yeah, until next time. Goodbye.